Hey, it's Janelle Waz, and welcome back to another episode of Trek Analysis. Captain Catherine Janeway, captain of the USS Voyager. Kate Mulgrew, the woman who brought her to life across seven seasons of Star Trek Voyager. Suffice to say, it's difficult to see anyone else as the formidable Captain Janeway. But what if I told you that Kate Mulgrew was not the first person to play Janeway? That French-Canadian actress Genevieve Bajol was originally cast? Or even what if I told you that Genevieve Bajol was not cast as Captain Catherine Janeway, but Captain Nicole Janeway? Captain Nicole Janeway? Today, we're headed into the Delta Quadrant with a little history, a little alternate footage, and seeing a glimpse at what Star Trek Voyager could have been. There's coffee in that nebula, as well as some scrapped footage of the Voyager pilot episode Caretaker, with a different Janeway played by Genevieve Bajol, this week on Trek Analysis. But before I go any further, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about Star Trek, video games, and whatever else I feel like talking about. Be great to have you aboard. So who is Genevieve Bajol? Admittedly, I didn't know a whole lot about her other than she was originally cast as Janeway. So I hit up Google for some info and this is a basic rundown of what I came away with. Genevieve Bajol was born in Montreal, Quebec in 1942. She was trained in French theater, but since her debut in 1961, got steady work in radio, theater, film, and television. She preferred working in films and was not exactly fond of doing television work, but nevertheless, she won an Emmy for her portrayal of St. Joan of Arc in Hallmark Hall of Fame for American TV, which featured movie-length episodes. She gained worldwide recognition in 1969 when she was cast as Anne Boleyn in Anna the Thousand Days with Richard Burton. Yes, Mr. Liz Taylor. You know what it means when a king asks for you. If I don't, I can ask my pregnant and foolish sister. Throughout her career, she would go on to win numerous awards, including a Golden Globe for Anna the Thousand Days, as well as getting steady work in cinema throughout the 70s and 80s. And by 1994, she was an experienced actress. So how did Genevieve Bajol make her way into Star Trek? Well, in 1994, a new Star Trek show was being developed, Star Trek Voyager, and a list of actors and actresses were considered for the lead captain, named Captain Janeway. Yes, Captain Janeway was almost a male character. Actually, it's kind of interesting to see who was being considered for the role. Have a look. A decision was finally reached, and Genevieve Bajol was cast as Captain Elizabeth Janeway, renamed to Captain Nicole Janeway due to some legal issues and at the request of Genevieve Bajol herself, only to drop out after two days of filming. Two? Yes, sir. So, what exactly happened? Well, there are a couple different stories. According to Genevieve Bajol herself, she was unaccustomed to the hectic pace of television filming. Now, if you look at her film credits, she does indeed have some experience in television, but she was never a regular cast member on a show, let alone a lead in a TV series. And she herself admitted that she preferred working in films rather than television. Now, when asked about it, Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock himself, is quoted as saying, When you're coming from a film schedule, 18-hour days are not comfortable. It's the kind of thing people desperately in search of a career will do. And it's also important to note that Leonard Nimoy had experience with Star Trek on TV and on film, both behind and in front of the camera. So taking that into account, and the fact that Genevieve Bajol was a film actress it would make sense that she was overwhelmed. There are, of course, other stories and rumors floating around about her departure, like dissatisfaction with her performance from the producers, as well as her dissatisfaction with the character of Captain Janeway. Other sources, however, paint a much less sympathetic picture of her. According to Entertainment Weekly, some sources on set claimed she was acting like a diva, didn't want anyone messing with her hair, and didn't like the makeup she had to wear. Although Genevieve Bajol's spokeswoman denies all this. 
Star Trek producer Rick Berman initially said she simply wasn't a good fit, but would later say that she wasn't ready for the rigors of episodic television, as well as claiming that she had trouble memorizing several pages of dialogue a day, didn't want to work with a director that she didn't know, and that she went to her trailer in tears, at which point Rick Berman and director Winrich Colby asked her to go home. Now, what actually happened? Who's to say? I'm just a Star Trek fan on the internet with Google, trying to be fair to everyone involved. And the only ones who really know what happened are those involved. What I can say is that I've seen convention videos where the cast of both Next Gen and DS9 talked about the long hours and how labor-intensive the shows were, especially DS9. It's a big reason why the cast of Next Gen would often goof off in between shots. It's because they were on set for so long. And while all the hard work definitely paid off and we got some great shows out of it, I can understand why Genevieve Bajol would be overwhelmed by everything. But nevertheless, a replacement captain was needed, and Kate Mulgrew, Star Trek writer and producer Brandon Braga's second choice, was asked to do another audition and eventually was cast as the newly renamed Captain Catherine Janeway. And the rest is history. Catherine Janeway. Okay, so now we got all the background out of the way, let's talk about the footage. Yes, there is indeed footage of Genevieve Bejold's Janeway from the Voyager pilot episode Caretaker, which can be found in the Voyager Season 1 DVDs. There isn't much, it's just a handful of scenes filmed in the two days that she was on set, but there's one scene in particular that I'm going to focus on today, and I encourage you all to go out and watch it for yourself. I'll link the video below. And for comparison, I also rewatched the scene with Kate Mulgrew's Janeway. The other scenes, well, you'll just have to get season one of Voyager on DVD to view them for yourself. I can't seem to find them online. So the scene in question is when Voyager is being flung into the Delta Quadrant. They're in the Badlands, there's a plasma storm, there's some weird displacement headed for them, things are going wrong, they can't do anything about it, and they're about to be taken by the Caretaker Array into the Delta Quadrant. It's a pretty significant scene, defining the entire premise of the show, Voyager being stranded in the Delta Quadrant. Now, I always try to be respectful when critiquing an actor's performance. It's not a personal insult against them. And I really hate to say this, especially knowing some of the background information about Genevieve Bajol's time on set and the fact that she was only on set a couple of days, which isn't a whole lot of time to get a feel for the character. But her version of Janeway isn't good. She's very bland, stiff, uncharismatic, and lacks any kind of command presence. I mean, when Tom Paris is stealing the scene when you're supposed to be the captain in command of the bridge, let alone the entire ship? That's not good. Look at the way she calls Red Alert or Brace for Impact. Red Alert. Brace for Impact. She's just saying the lines, there's no energy behind them, and she sounds mostly disinterested despite the fact that they could all die at any moment. Heck, the first officer did. She calls Red Alert and Brace for Impact like she's announcing that she needs to take her clothes to the cleaners or that she needs to pick up milk at the store. There should be some weight behind those lines, and it's simply not there. And again, I don't say this to personally attack Genevieve Bajolt. Heck, I even took a look at a clip of her performance in Anna the Thousand Days, and she had fire! If we lose the King's favor, we lose everything. Then say goodbye to it all, house, rank, and revenues, for I will not take the King to my bed. Where was that? Where was that Genevieve Bajol in this scene? You can tell she's a capable actress. Heck, Robert Beltran, who plays Commander Chakotay, wanted to work on Voyager because he was a fan of her work. But she is not pulling this scene together. Maybe she could have gotten better as the show went on, but if I'm being honest, I can't see the show lasting one season, let alone seven, with Nicole Janeway. But okay, I talked about one scene. What about the other scenes with Genevieve Bajol? Well, to be honest, they're not much better. 
There's more interaction with the main cast members, namely when she meets Harry Kim and a talk she has with Tuvok about his family. In those scenes, especially the one with Tuvok, who she's supposed to have known for years at this point, she comes across as very cold and distant. And once again, I have the same problems with these scenes as I do with the other scene I talked about. She's just saying her lines without a lot of emotion behind them, and she comes across as very stiff. Heck, she barely moves around the room. Maybe she was taking a different approach to Janeway than I'm used to, you know, a much more stoic approach. But I can't help but feel that while watching Kate Mulgrew's version of these scenes, Kate comes across as more human. She moves around a lot more, changes her posture, and even varies the tone and emotion of her voice. It comes across as a much more organic performance, as opposed to Genevieve Bijol's, which is much more formal and stiff. Would you like to take over? Yes, ma'am. It's not crunch time yet, Mr. Kim. Would you like to take over? Yes, ma'am. It's not crunch time yet, Mr. Kim. I'll get you back to them. That's a promise. I'll get you back to them. That's a promise, Tuvok. Ultimately, I think the right call was made when Kate Mulgrew was cast as Captain Catherine Janeway. From the start, Kate Mulgrew's Janeway exuded confidence, from her body language to the way she recites her lines. She's lively, her lines are said clearly and confidently. She has a command presence throughout the episode. She owns the scene. Tom Paris isn't outshining her on her own bridge. This is the kind of woman you could follow into battle. Heck, this is the kind of woman the Maquis, fugitive she was sent to apprehend, could willingly join to make it back to the Alpha Quadrant. In the end, I think everything worked out for the best. Genevieve Bajol removed herself from a situation she wasn't going to be happy in, Kate Mulgrew became a pillar in the Star Trek universe, and we got seven seasons of a pretty good show. Mr. Paris, set a course for home. So what do you think? Have you seen the footage of Genevieve Bajol's Janeway? What did you think of it? Do you agree with my assessment of her performance, or could you find something that I couldn't? Was I too harsh with my criticisms? Again, I feel kind of bad being as harsh as I was, and I want to be clear that my criticisms are not aimed at Genevieve Bejold as a person. And what are some other Star Trek alternate castings that you find interesting? Please, leave comments below and discuss. As always, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Trek Analysis. If you like what you see, why not give my video a like and subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends! Until next time... Thank you, sir. I don't like being addressed as sir.